All right, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios, and this comes from our class, The Ultimate Toolmaker's Guide to the Affinity Suite. So if you like what you hear and you want a little bit more, go ahead and check out the link below for a special price for our YouTube family and a special discount on our monthly subscription plan. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, gang, welcome to Affinity Photo. So this is an Affinity Photo exclusive lesson. There is no filter for this in Affinity Designer. So if you're gonna make seamless textures, this filter will make your life a lot easier. However, it's not available in Affinity Designer to do it this way. All right, so you've got this in your downloads. This is the Affine Template 1, okay? So just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and save this just in case I don't, that way if I mess it up. Now, what a find does, you're going to select the image, you're going to want to go to filters, distort, a find. That's where you'll find this. Let's click on it. Now, what a find does, think of it like rolling an image. When you make a seamless texture, you want this light yellow to be identical and match up to the orange, right? So to do this, let's offset this in the X. Now remember, a fine will take the orange and match it to the yellow. And I'm gonna put an offset in X to 50%. But I'm gonna do it with the slider so that you guys see it roll. Here we go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And boom. Now you see I overshot it a little bit. Let's make that exactly 50. Now notice that the edge of what was that quadrant is now in the center, and the edge on the right-hand side is now at the center. You can now clone stamp these two things together to make them match. That's what makes the filter seamless, or the texture seamless. And notice before, the red star was over here, and the blue circle was over here. Now, if you wanna check that, let's go back to zero. There they are, look at that, and now, 50%, here they go, being buddies. And I'm gonna just make that specific. All right, now the same thing works with the Y offset. You'll see that the yellow or orange triangle and the green diamond are at the bottom and the blue circle and the red star are at the top. Watch what happens when I make this 50%. Now, just in case you wonder how that worked, watch this. I'm going back to zero. Okay, so there's zero, right? Rolling positive 50. It's now put the bottom edge against the top edge. Now, why is this important? Because whatever was on the bottom edge now, you can match with the top edge. That way when you put it back to right, it all matches. So if I was to come in and clone stamp everything around these intersections. And then I come back and I set this to zero. And I set this to zero to bring it back the way it was. I should have exactly matchy matchy edges around the outside. Now the inside, that was already matchy matchy. Why? Because it was part of the image. All right, folks, welcome back to Affinity Photo. So let's go ahead and practice what we learned about this affine filter here to create a seamless texture off from something that seemingly is not seamless. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a subtle adjustment to this thing here. I'm gonna go over to the clone stamp. I'm gonna hold X and I'm gonna raise that up a little bit and we're gonna put that just like that. All right, perfect, that was driving me nuts. All right, so you see that this is a pixel image. We're gonna uncheck it. Then we're gonna come over and we're gonna crop it. Now remember, seamless textures only work when you have a square crop. So we're gonna crop it, we're gonna come over to the cog, we're gonna hit the one-to-one, -one, and we're gonna find a spot that we kind of like. Okay, so I'm gonna pick something that maybe has some value right about in here, and we're gonna hit enter. Now, in order to do this, right click, rasterize and trim make sure you do that when you click your bounding box you want it to be snug you don't want areas out there you must commit the crop now what we're going to do we're going to come over to the filter 
and we're going to go to the distort and we're going to go to a fine and we're going to go 50 and we're going to go 50. All right. Now, what we just did here is we just took the edges and we moved them to the inside. So what we want now is those edges to matchy matchy. In order to do that, we're probably going to do a lot with the clone brush. So let's go ahead and Okay, you see kind of what I'm doing here? Now, it doesn't have to be specific. Like if I liked this area, I could easily come in and I could make that matchy matchy this. That's actually pretty darn cool. So don't be afraid to mess with it because what you're doing, you're setting up success on your edges. And remember, these centers are now on the outside. They've got their stuff figured out, right? You ain't gonna hurt them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit larger brush here. And I really like this side of the texture. So I'm going to come up and we're going to pop in some of those. All right. Let's go ahead and grab this area too here. I kind of like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and zoom out, see how it looks. I wanna add just a little bit more right about in here. Okay, that actually looks pretty darn good. Oh, I missed one there. Let's not do that. There we go, perfect. All right. All right, now, what do we do with this? Now we come back and we go filter, and we're gonna apply another example of the distort of fine, but this time we're gonna go negative 50 in each direction. All right, so we just went negative 50 in each direction. Oops. Ah. Uh, Forgot to apply it, my bad. Distort, a fine. If you're gonna be dumb, you better be tough, right? Okay, and apply, there we go. All right, problem solved, problem stand solved. Now let's do our acid test here. I'm gonna go file, export, and I'm gonna save this then as a PNG. And we're gonna call this steel one. Actually concrete one, sorry. Concrete two. And I chose an example with some extreme differences. If you were gonna do this for a texturizing brush, you would just keep it very, very similar in texture and it really wouldn't show up, but I wanted to do something a little bit extreme. All right, let's go ahead and file, save as, we'll call this concrete two. Now, if we pass this test, here's the thing, we should be able to, and I say should, we should be able to duplicate this, edit, copy, edit, paste, and now let's see how it lines up. Now, notice what's happening here. This is good. Notice these two marks are even. That is a sign of a good texture. All right, that looks good. Now, if we did this, let's try this. Duplicate. Let's just copy it. All right, 
And now, what should happen in this area? That now comes together. That is perfect. All right. That, my friends, is a good example of how to do a repeating seamless texture. Now, this image is not the best example of it for a texturizer brush, but I wanted you to have an extreme example of how you could take an image and use the clone stamp tool very quickly in order to make it happen. Honestly, if I had more time, I would have spent more time with it. All right, folks, let's go ahead and call it a day.